Hello, welcome back to Ghost Trick. I... I don't fully recall where we are. Uh, which is, I believe, how I've begun every single episode of Ghost Trick since I started playing it. <laughs> you think at some point I'd remember. I never do. It looks like the kidnappers made a big mistake. The girl in the trunk was Detective Jad's daughter, Camila, not the minister's daughter. Let me just make sure that everything is recording fine, because... I have, I have a bunch of stuff I have to do tonight, so I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to have to record again, uh, frankly. Yeah, everything's fine. When I got back to the Justice Minister's office, things were getting even more out of hand. Devastated man was being grilled by a fiery detective. I feel like the dialogue in certain areas could be tightened up a little bit. I don't know if that's a failure of translation or if that's just some <laughs> some inefficient dialogue. I don't know. <laughs> I told Lynn what I had found out about the kidnapping. That it wasn't the justice minister's daughter who had been abducted. That the kidnappers had been holed up in Camila's old house. That they had sensed my presence and were already gone. Camila? Why do they have Camila? Her father isn't the stupid old justice minister. I think the stupid old part is a little uncalled for. Looks like the kidnappers made a mistake somehow. The poor girl came for the ransom of her own father. God damn it. The poor girl kidnapped for the ransom of her own father's execution. It's just too much. It's the cruel trust of fate. Jesus Christ. It's a cruel twist of fate, I agree. Then there are those other twists, too. Like the kidnappers winding up and using Camilla's old house as their hideout. There's no way it could be just coincidence. And them sensing my presence. They seem to know about the powers of the dead. I just don't understand any of it. <laughs> I told you before, detective. I want you to stand back. Who cares about distance at a time like that? Ooh, jeez. <laughs> you know, a couple years earlier, that would have been kind of, you know. Uh, anyways, look, M Mr. Minister, it wasn't your daughter that was kidnapped. Don't try and pretend you didn't hear what we were saying. How can I believe in you? I'm a realist. If you don't believe what we say, see it for yourself. Just call home and... I tried calling a hundred times my boyfriend answer. I'm sorry about the, the whistling. I don't know what that's all about. She won't? It's complicated. Why does life have to be such a complicated thing? But if she doesn't answer, doesn't that mean everything's normal? Doesn't prove it. <laughs> I'm being watched. I can't have the police go check for me. Besides, if the execution isn't carried out tonight, the hostage will be killed. What difference does it make that it's not my daughter? I think I know who this is. Ooh-wee, that's quite a pickle, Mr. Minister. Quite a pickle. Yeah, it's this motherfucker. How'd you get here? Miss me, baby? I love him. He's just he's too much I have a little report for you Mr. Minister uh huh <clears throat> the escape prisoner has been apprehended thought you might like to see him so here he is <laughs> those are the, the the weirdest fucking guards Detective Judd, I'm so sorry. I tried. I know that you're innocent. I just can't prove it. So sorry. Lynn, please don't apologize to me. Ah, the beautiful love between teacher and student. It brings a tear to my eye. <sighs> um, what? 
I, there are two things. Lynn doesn't really know that Jode is innocent. She just believes it from the bottom of her heart. The execution and the kidnapping are real threats. Time marches on. I'll gather information and see if I can think of something. It all relates back to me somehow. I just know it. Okay. Oh, God. I don't want to talk to you, man. Do I literally have to go all the fucking way over here, use this, to get to the goddamn... Okay, you. What are you saying? You knew, didn't you, Inspector Cavanaugh, that the execution was tonight? I don't believe I had any obligation to tell you. And you're fine with this? I mean, you know as well as I do. Detective Jack could never have done such a thing. Well, come on now, baby. I know no such thing. I know two things to be true and two things only. One, he was given the death penalty. And two, he tried to escape. What else could I do but haul him in, baby? If that's the case, why did you bring him here? He escaped from prison, right? So why didn't you just take him back to the prison? I think you only brought him here to brag about your accomplishment. Isn't that right, Inspector? For your own selfish reasons. Is all those rumors about you true? The only thing you care about is a spotless record? Is that more important to you than saving a friend? Everybody has certain principles they but can't go back on. Including me. You'll understand that someday, baby. <clears throat> I'm a death row inmate who escaped from prison. This is how it should be. Okay, yeah, what, what do I do? I've forgotten what I'm supposed to do to get where I need to go. I know I have to turn this up. Uh, uh, no. Uh, E, yeah. There? Is that good enough? It's not good enough. Okay. Do I have to talk to this dipshit? I don't wanna. To the girl that was kidnapped was named Camila. Wait a minute. Emily? Could that be the Emily next door? Yeah, I think so. Wow, I didn't know the justice minister lived next door. Oh, not me, my wife. It's a, it's complicated. Yeah, I bet it'd be pretty hard to admit she left him. The minister's wife ran away on him? Maybe they grew apart, what with him being so busy? Yeah, I bet you're right. Please stop gossiping about me inside my own head. Uh, oh. I literally can't get past you. Oh, fucking hell, there we are. Guess I'll talk to you while I'm here. According to what I heard, Emily was supposed to go to some sort of lesson tonight. Those horrible kidnappers, they were lying in wait for her. But Emily didn't go out at all. She couldn't. She had a fever. Huh. And so the kidnappers grabbed Camila by mistake instead? Apparently, Emily and Camila are about the same age. The kidnappers must have gotten the two of them mixed up. I also think, don't both of them have... Either they both have purple hair... Or Camila has purple and Emily has blue, so it makes sense. It's my fault. If I hadn't asked Camila to do that errand for me, this never would have happened. You're right, you asked her to bring the music box. Okay. So if I swing wide, I can avoid having to talk to people. Good, good, okay. Jowd, talk to me. So, Mr. Ghost, we meet again. Here's something happened. Something about a kidnapping? Some kidnappers are saying they abducted the justice minister's daughter. It's terrible. What's the demand? Why do you look so cheerful? Carrying out of your execution tonight. <laughs> I had no idea I was so hated. The minister doesn't have to worry. I die and it's all over. Very simple. It's not that simple. Why not? 
Because it isn't really the minister's daughter who got kidnapped. It's Camila. Camila. I checked it out for myself. I'm positive. And by the way, Camila told me something interesting. She said the one who killed her mother five years ago was Camila herself. What are you talking about? I'm the one who shot her. I'm the one that shot Alma. And when I'm executed tonight, that will be the end of it. Camila won't have to suffer anymore after tonight. For a capable detective, you say some pretty... Christ almighty, why can I not read? <clears throat> For a capable detective, you say some incredibly misguided things. You dying isn't going to end that girl's suffering. It'll just bring her new suffering. The only person's pain this execution is going to ease is yours. Why don't you tell us what you know? To be honest, I still don't understand what happened that day. It was my wife, Alma's birthday. Came home from work and she went in first. I looked for the shooter, but there was nobody to be found. There was nobody there besides Alma and Camila. Just the two of them. So the little lady's mother died right in front of her. It's so horrible. Camila told me about it. She was crying. She said the contraption she had made did something it wasn't supposed to. An impossible move. Alright. Um... Let's do Powers of the Dead. I don't think any of these end until you've done all of them. But just to be sure, it's been five years since then. I stopped thinking about it. I shot Alma. There's no other explanation. It's what I'd convinced everyone of. Really. Tonight, you shut up and gave me an explanation I never would have thought of before. Powers of the Dead, right? That day in that room, powers that I didn't understand were at work. If that's the case, it clears up all the mysteries. Maybe not all. There are a couple of other people who know about those powers. Kidnappers who abducted Camila knew about those powers. This is no ordinary kidnapping. Looks like my wife's case isn't coming to an end after all. I'm the only one who thought it was. Still time before dawn. Little, anyways. How about you see this case through to the end before you die? <laughs> Camilla was a quiet little girl, but she was good with her hands. She was a little genius at making elaborate toys and contraptions. But there were two very strange points about that contraption. Contraption. The first was, of course, the firing of that gun. Right, that was an antique gun I'd had on display for years. So it wasn't part of the little lady's original design. Of course it wasn't. It was supposed to be a surprise for her mother's birthday. The other strange point was the movement of that cupid. It was supposed to shoot its arrow without turning around. This is so fucking dangerous for a child to do. <laughs> like, this is why you don't leave your genius child alone with string and something she could use as a pulley system. This is why you don't do that. <laughs> Somebody made a change in the contra- Somebody made a change to the contraption's design and then manipulated it. I don't know what to say. I didn't have time to think things through then. All I knew was I had to protect Camila. I made a small adjustment to the scene and turned myself in. What kind of adjustment? The gun, of course. Gun, eh? Come to think of it. There was no gun there. Just a picture hanging on the wall. But of course not, because I switched the gun out of that frame with the picture. 
didn't believe what she told me about her contraption, but one thing was for certain, that gun was still smoking. So that gun really did shoot Alma. I hid the gun before I went to the police. Put it in a wooden box and gave it to a certain detective. What? That detective still thinks it's a music box. So that's what was in the box, huh? I got a different murder weapon ready to give to the police. My own pistol. And I did a few other things to make it look good. I, I won't go into the details. When I was all done, I turned myself in. I think that's all we can get out of this. Detective Jode, is what you told us just now true? Of course. In that case, there's still time. Time to solve the case that started five years ago. <laughs> She's just saying all this shit out loud. I didn't do it, Detective Jode, and of course little Camila didn't do it either. True perpetrator is still out there, and I'm going to prove it. Sounds wonderful. Then, where's the music box now? It's in Temsic Park. Camilla left it there. That gun is important evidence. You'd better go pick it up. Do something about the kidnapping so we can get the minister on our side. Yet again, I say, easy enough for you to say. <laughs> What's going on? Give me the deal, Mr. Death Row inmate. <laughs> A little change in plans. My daughter has been kidnapped. I can't just go off to die without doing something. But you're in our custody, don't forget. Back at the prison, everybody's waiting. Jesus Christ, what is the sentence? A normal sentence. I just can't read, apparently. Back at the prison, everybody's waiting for you. A special seat, just for you, baby. And I guess you'd better prove my innocence in the double. <laughs> Want to save Camilla in more ways than one. That's all there is to it. Let's see. An old friend in more ways than one. What say you, Mr. Minister? May we have your decision? Oh. Should the execution be carried out tonight, as planned, or should we hold off and wait for this important evidence to come in? <laughs> the order still stands. Bring the prisoner back immediately and resume its enforcement. Well, Excellency, why are you like this? Please don't bow down to me. And especially not that low. Stop being a fucking weirdo, dude. In that case, can I have one of your boys arrange a prison van to pick him up? This man is so fruity. I cannot believe he is married to a woman. Look at this. <laughs> Why do you have that? Where were you? Never mind. Escape tonight was brilliant. Show me another miracle in these last few minutes of yours. I don't know. Uh, I guess the only miracle is I have to solve the kidnapping. Glad to see Detective Jode all fired up now, but I feel like I'm under the gun here. Even if Lynn does come through with the proof of Jode's innocence, it'll be meaningless if Jode or Camilla die. Got to do something about that kidnapping somehow. Ask for some advice from a capable detective there. Uh. Jowd or I guess Jowd, not not Cabell. <laughs> Most likely the minister won't stop the execution. Not as long as there's any small chance his daughter is the one who was kidnapped. But she isn't the one, I'm sure of it. It would be great if we could prove that to the minister. Prove it? How? I doubt his wife is ever going to answer that phone if we call from here. If we call from here, right. But a phone works in both directions. What I'm saying is, only family members can solve a family problem. I have to admit, I don't like depending on others, but you're the only one who can change this situation. Gee, detective. 
For these past five years, Camilla is the only thing that kept me going. Can't go meekly to the chair now. I hate to ask this, but would you mind saving me? Kid again just as soon as stop with his wife and daughter, but is there a way? Yeah, that's I I knew that. I was going to do that. <laughs> I have to I have to not talk to this dipshit, because he's got nothing useful to say. <sighs> okay. I think if I yeah, if I go back to Lady Red's apartment, I can probably... Because she wanted to call her dad, didn't she? So I can probably get her to call her dad from here somehow. <laughs> Just as I thought. This little girl is safe in her bed. There's got to be something I can do. Murder, execution, jailbreak, betrayal, and now kidnapping. This last link in the long chain of a sad fate lit a fire in Jad's heart. The chance to turn it all around is right here in this room. <laughs> Getting a strange premonition. Everything that happened so far tonight is related back to me in some way. I bet this mistake ridden abduction does too. Yes, there was a typo there. It said mistaken written when it should have said mistake written. Listen. Once again, there's some... Uh, sometimes there's some weird dialogue. <laughs> wow, that was a short chapter too. I probably could have gotten both of these done. <sighs> this one and the last one done in one episode. <sighs> I feel like I didn't really get much done, but I want to keep these to a chapter... Of a video, so I guess it'll end here. Sorry. It's Cabanella, not Cabala, or whatever the hell I called him. I immediately forgot that man's name the moment it was off my screen. But yeah, sorry once again that this is so short. Uh, the next chapter should be much longer, if I recall correctly. Uh, although there's a good chance that I don't, but if I recall correctly, the next chapter is much longer. Uh, saving, well, saving Jowd by getting Emily to the phone is, I believe, a, a process. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, I've had episodes of this, Baldur's Gate, Cassette Beast slash Monster Sanctuary, Dredge, all that. Uh, that's Mondays and Saturdays, so I'll see you then.